And so the Disclosure Project is a nonprofit effort to assemble the best possible witnesses and the best available evidence and put it out to the public and also to our leaders. We well, you know people can see a lot of this at disclosureproject.org, which is our website, and we have over 450 military and intelligence witnesses. Some are, they range from generals and brigadier generals to air traffic controllers and strategic air command uh, personnel in the Air Force to civilian people in the uh, FAA, the Federal uh, Aviation Administration, to astronauts and cosmonauts. And it's an enormous uh, database of of people who have up close and personally seen UFOs or worked in those projects in their capacity as a government uh, or military person. And uh, many of them, most of them, had top secret uh, clearances, some of them highly compartmented. And uh, their information is really dispositive. Uh, we have uh, enormous uh, documentation that is corroborated by multiple people. For example, when I said, let's see what the Strategic Air Command and what the interest has been in these extraterrestrial vehicles for nuclear, uh, seeing what we're doing with nuclear weapons. We decided not to identify one or two, but we have like a couple dozen of those people who were in st Strategic Air Command, who were in, in nuclear facilities, who were in the old Atomic Energy Commission, like Colonel Diedrichson that we have as a witness, who had personal knowledge of the fact that even though there's clearly no evidence, I want to emphasize this, that these extraterrestrial civilizations are hostile towards us. I think they're very worried about our hostility. I always turn this on its head because most of these sort of documentaries are always like alien invasion and all this stuff. No, 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 no. The issue is that, you know, if they were hostile, we would know it by now. It's clear to me that what's going on is that they're very concerned that at the time that humanity reached the ability to go into space, early space exploration, 50s. We also had already developed weapons of mass destruction and thermonuclear and hydrogen bombs and stuff. And that the, the co coincidence of that, the coming together of those two things, put a big red flag over Earth. And so if you look at the databases from the 50s, 60s, 70s on forward, not only in the United States, but in Great Britain, in um, the Soviet Union, in China, that wherever we had uh, space, aerospace, and nuclear facilities, there were a lot of these so-called UFOs being seen. And it makes sense because it, it's a very short distance from where we are now to being able to go further out in the space with these kinds of aggressive tendencies. And one of the things I point out to people is that our social and spiritual development appears to have uh, lagged behind, uh, behind our technological prowess. And our technological capacities are actually, at this point, a threat to perhaps the cosmic order, if you will. Uh, a term called fast walkers that's uh, been used uh, from people who have been at uh, NORAD uh, that have tracked these objects uh, in near Earth uh, space. Actually, that term was used in the 60s and 70s. The National Security Agency actually for a long time had called these ETVs, extraterrestrial vehicles. Um, the word UFO is actually a disinformation term that was invented after they knew that they weren't unidentified and they knew they didn't fly. So it's sort of a a mind play. The fast walkers are these very rapid moving um, electrogravitic and anti-gravity discs and shape craft of various shapes that are tracked on uh, classified uh, tracking systems, both in our deep space network and also in the atmosphere. Uh, we have more than one witness who have been involved in the uh, tracking of these objects on radar. You know, many people say, well, look, if this stuff was real, why are there no radar reports? I said, we have them. We actually have the radar tapes from the FAA. So we have the uh, people from the FAA and from the military who have tracked these objects. And uh, they've been called fast walkers because, as opposed to slow walkers, which are satellites, because they move at enormous speeds. For example, they've been tracked at going tens of thousands of miles per hour in the atmosphere and make a right-hand turn without decelerating. Well, you can't do that with a conventional system. You have to correct for gravity and mass inertia. And that's what these things are doing. So these have been tracked on uh, dedicated and classified radar systems. Occasionally, people who are on an ordinary system will pick them up if they really wanted to find out. I think they need to look at these firsthand top secret witnesses and what they've seen. I think that if you go to the civilians, it's a whole gamish of misinformation, disinformation, and amateur hour. What we've tried to do is professionalize the effort and people really need to look. I mean, if somebody who had the clearance to carry nuclear weapons or launch nuclear weapons saw these objects over a nuclear facility, 
and reported it and have documents to prove it happened, this is dispositive. That's what someone who is wanting to look into this who says, well, could this really be true and I don't know about it? They need to look at that and we've assembled it. We have a 600 page book of top secret documents and the transcripts of these witnesses. We have videotapes, we have a four hour tape, we have a two hour tape, we have a one hour tape. Uh, and our website, disclosureproject.org, actually has a lot of this information and the, and the te testimony on there. I think that's what people need to look at and it's the weight of the evidence. But if you want to look at uh, one case, for example, that would be dispositive, Look at what uh, this, uh, the third highest ranking member of the FAA, John Callahan, brought to us. This man, during the Reagan years, was in charge of accidents and investigations for the FAA in the United States, the Federal Aviation Administration. He was called into a case, which is the Japan Airlines case over Alaska, where an extraterrestrial vehicle the size of a, a huge ship was being tracked on military radar, civilian radar, and on board a 747's onboard radar for a prolonged period of time. This was given back to him. He did an analysis of the data. He determined that it was a real structured object moving at enormous and unusual velocities. In fact, it would be one point in the sky and then instantly would be in another place 40, 50 miles away. And this thing was the size of, he said, of a destroyer, a battleship. Big, huge. It wasn't like 30 feet around. It was hundreds of feet. This was seen by the pilot. We have the pilot's report. We have the original radar tapes and the digital reports, this thick of a report. He was called in to do a briefing for Ronald Reagan's science advisor, people from the CIA and FBI. At the end of that meeting, they turned to him and they said, you were not at this meeting, this event didn't happen, and we're confiscating all this stuff. But what they didn't know is that they confiscated duplicates. He kept the originals and when he retired, he gave them to us. This man's name is John Callahan. We have his name, address, a phone number, we have all this evidence, that's one case, so, I mean, it, and it's dispositive. And the question is, if you have one case like that, it proves it. But we have hundreds of cases like that. So I would say to people, look at the evidence. The evidence is there. Now, the big question is, why doesn't the masses of people know about it? The only institution that is more corrupt than what I'm describing as this rogue transnational kleptocracy is the major media. More, worse than the Congress, worse than the White House, worse than anything at the normal level of clearances at the Pentagon is big media. Big media does not report the truth about these things because they are not free to. And we think in the United States and in the Western world, we really have a free press. We have a free press on everything that's not important. On the really important issues, it's very controlled. And this is the most important issue. This is the biggest secret in the history of the human race, the known modern history of government. And uh, they have cooperated with keeping this secret. ABC News and other big, major networks were at the Disclosure Project National Press Club event about four years ago. The executive producer for ABC News told me they wanted to do a very big expose on this through Primetime Live or 2020. I said, we'll give you everything. So we gave him literally, you know, the, the sort of uh, distilled 35 hours of digital videotape of these witnesses and all our documents. Uh, so he could do this and carte blanche access to all these top secret witnesses. He called me a couple weeks later and said, well, they won't let me do this. I said, who's they? He says, well, Dr. Greer, you know who they are. And so the people, the corporate bosses who answer to some of these transnational financial and other interests were basically killed the project. Uh, we've seen this happen over and over again. And so you can get a certain amount of information out through the large media, but it's very superficial, very brief. That's what we found. The in-depth sort of disclosure of what's really going on, who's behind it, what the agenda is, that is almost always stopped. Or if they try to do it, it gets turned into something ridiculous. So my point is, is that the media people, the rank and file are often very interested, but then from somewhere deeper and higher than they are, it gets killed if they try to do anything in depth. So that's what we have found. And so the in depth information, I think we have to put out through the internet, uh, through other documentaries and through other means. Uh, maybe eventually there will be a media interest that is large media that will do a true expose of this. We stand ready to work with anyone who's willing to do that. We all have a responsibility to find out what the truth is about something like this. And it is, people have to take responsibility for looking into what the truth is. We've put together the means for people to do that. Now people have to take the initiative and we need all the help we can get. I would ask people to help us network this to anyone and in any institution that can help.
The reason this is so critical is that we've reached a point in our civilization where for us to go forward as a people, we're gonna to have to end this kind of illegal secrecy. And we're going to have to allow this information and these technologies to get out, begin to fix many of these large problems. The question of UFOs and extraterrestrials, most people just think is something entertaining. In reality, it's something that is central to how we're going to be able to go forward as a civilization, because that issue involves sciences, technologies, energy and propulsion systems that could give us a whole new civilization. Imagine being able to run your house or your car or your business from an energy source that is non-polluting, doesn't connect to a central grid, does not use fossil fuels or nuclear power, and is extracting energy from what's called the space around us, the quantum vacuum space. That's what these technologies do. We, the taxpayers, have through our government and what's called the black budget, it's about $100 billion a year, put money that have gone into corporations like Lockheed, Northrop, SAIC, EG&G, Raytheon and E-Systems, okay, Atlantic Research Corporation, and those entities have these technologies. It's time for us to say, we would like to have a dividend on that investment. And this information belongs to the people, the technologies belong to the people, and the earth and all of humanity needs to have these technologies for peaceful energy generation. If you like this video and you wanna see more amazing content, go ahead and check out the next video on our channel.